2019. Yeah, so which one of the following is a factor of production? What are factors of production? Factors of production are the resources that helps in the production of goods and services, which are land, labor, capital, and enterprise. So which one of these is a factor of production of land? So the answer is A. I think that's clear. Clear, right? Yes. So go to question two. So a firm has a total fixed cost of 40000 per month and a variable cost of $150 per unit. If it produces 1,000 units, what are the total costs per month for the firm? We said the total cost is fixed cost plus variable cost. Yeah. Then we have our total cost to be, total fixed cost to be 40000 that's TFC. Then we have the cost per unit, which is 150. So 150 multiplied by 1,000 gives us 150,000. So 150,000 plus 40,000 gives 190,000. So the answer is A. Is it clear? We go to question three. C. We so said, what is meant by the term demand? Uh, demand goes in the sense that customers are willing to buy at the enterprise. Yes. Yes, the quantity of goods or services households are willing to buy at a given price and time. This is what time. demand is. At a given price and time. 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 Yes, that is what demand is. Don't worry, I have it here. So we go to D. Let's state the formula of social cost. Social cost is private cost plus external cost. Is it clear? Yes. So go to question E. Divide the term tertiary sector. We call it tertiary sector because it provides services. services. What? This is a cost? Social cost is private cost plus right. external. Okay. Private cost plus external cost. Tertiary sector is a relative sector, right? Tertiary sector, yes. yes. Tertiary sector, they produce these uh, services. They provide services. Is it clear? Yes. We go to E. F. F, F sorry, thank you. He said, uh, we have a schedule that shows the cost of production per month. We have the quantity, we have the total fixed cost, and we have the total variable cost. Total fixed cost plus total variable cost of the uh, by output. So average cost is AC, AC cost to TC divided by output. So TC is TFC plus TVC, which is 12,100 yeah. divided so, by output of 2,000. 6.05. 6.05. Thank you. Now we go to G. We have a graph. So we have this graph. It said, this is the length of the load, the effect of. Okay. We are missing out on something. But I think it's fine this way, right? Yes, it's great. So based on what we have here, it said, this is the length of the load, the effect of the market cost after the UK destroys the land. So if the UK destroys the land, it means that natural disaster, yes or no? Yes. So if there's natural disaster, it reduces the supply of goods. That means the production of such well, crop be would reduce. That is the point. So with, with such situation, the supply for crops would shift leftward based on what? A factor, which is natural disaster. Okay. You, uh, Do you get the point? There's natural disaster, right? This is a natural disaster. Yes. So what does natural disaster do? It reduces the supply of goods or it stops production. That is what natural disaster will do. Yes. So if production stops, or if because there's art in production, crops that are being supplied will reduce. The quantity supplied in the market will fall. Do you get the point here? Yes. So this is the equilibrium. This is the equilibrium. This is our equilibrium quantity. This is equilibrium, equilibrium quantity. This is equilibrium price. So this is when the market is still okay. But now there's what? There's natural disaster, which will up or which will stop the supply of crops. So what happens to the quantity supply? The, the supply curve will shift leftward. From, from S to S1. From S to what? S1. S1. So let's see. We do have a blue line. So from S to S1, let's just say, let's do it this way. Okay, great. Let's, let's try to do it this way. So there's a sheet, there's a natural disaster, 
which means our supply curve will shift left -right. The supply for crops will fall, will reduce based on the fact that there's natural disaster. Shifting it from S to what? S1. As a result of this, the quantity supplied in the market will, will contract to shift to the left. from QD to Q1. So at this point, let's say at this point, Q1. The quantity will contract to increase. Please look at the board, please. We contract from QE to what? Q1. That is because of what the supply has fallen. So with this, what happens to the price? What should we do? Increase. Increase. The price will increase from PE to P1. P1. So the three situations then are one, the equivalent quantity will reduce, the equivalent quantity will fall, so the equivalent price will increase, production will decrease. Supply will fall. Do we get it? Yes. Yeah. Is it clear? Yeah. Is that what? We have to pay in a high price. Yeah, prices will increase because supply has fallen. That means there's going to be some shortage in the market. So shortage will lead to this. Yes, yes. Yeah. How it can know exactly? Look at how I did it. I don't even know. Yeah. I did it the same way. Yeah, it's fine. It's okay. It's not more. Okay. No. What I understand your point. If the curve, just make sure that the curve is meeting at this point because this is the new equilibrium. How do I know? How do I know here? The first situation is that there's going to be a shift, a left one shift in the supply curve from S to S1. From S to S1 to this point. At this point, you trace it down to the quantity that will be supplied to the market. As far as you know the quantity that will be supplied to the market, you trace it up to get the price. So at this point, this is our new equilibrium. Where the demand and supply is meeting now. This is the new curve, the new equilibrium. Is it clear? The point is more upward. Okay. If it's what? Upward. It has to meet at this point. Oh, I know it has to be in between. Don't you see that a new line has met? There's a new line. Yes or no? Yes, I know. This is this is your demand curve, right? Yeah. But what is happening here is about supply. Yes or no? Yes. It's about supply. So your curve, your new supply curve will meet up with demand. So demand is steady here. But now you're going to form a graph that's going to give us the consequence of natural disaster. Is it clear now? So we, natural disaster is a factor that, that shifts the demand curve or supply curve left to the supply curve left to because natural disaster means that production will stop. So we if production stop, the supply curve will shift left to from S to S1. At that point in time, the quantity supply will contract from Q E to Q1. This is the market equilibrium. But now there's going to be what a change in the in the curve based on natural uh, because of natural disaster. So the new equilibrium will be at P1, P1, Q1, S1. One day, look at the question you're asking. The new equilibrium will be at P1, S1, Q1. Before that it was QE, S or P E and S. S and D. This is the equilibrium of all that. But now there's a change because of natural disaster. So we're going to have new equilibrium. The new equilibrium will be higher. Equilibrium will be higher in price. The equilibrium quantity will fall. And supply will be shift left one from S to S1. Demand doesn't change. It is based on supply. It is based on supply. Is it clear? Yeah. Any questions about this? No. So we'll continue.